Um, Cross-gender counseling in chapter 5. Chapter 6, research against counseling. This is actually awesome because these are unbelievers doing this research. And they're actually showing that there's no discernible mathematical, statistical, real difference in the method of psychotherapy. More than 500 different methods are out there. And some that are widely different than what we would appreciate. And some are more biblical and they use religious language. And there's, there's 500 or more different methods of psychotherapy. Statistically, it makes no difference which form you use. As far as the outcome, as far as the results, as far as uh, people that are still in need of counseling a year later or versus people who say, no, I'm cured. Um, and the people who are cured would have been cured anyway, even without the counseling. All right. Um, that is a powerful chapter there called Research Against Counseling. Uh, number seven, in cahoots. In cahoots. Interesting. Who do you think has an interest in this whole industry? Who's making money on this? Follow the money. Who is making billions pushing the pills? All right. Yeah. Overcoming problem-centeredness is chapter 8. Ministering biblically is chapter 9. What I love about this book, it's not just 300 pages of counseling is bad. Okay? It actually has answers. It says actually counsel from the Word of God is what we're supposed to have. Or we're supposed to have it as we minister to one another in the loving assembly of a local church ministering biblically, the believer's daily walk, and then the conclusion and exhortation, stop counseling, start ministering. That's what it's about. So we'll tackle those. We'll take them chapter by chapter. Let me start with the introduction. Let's see. Was there more on the website before I get to that? Let me read a couple of other things, and then we'll get to that. about this ministry. Who are we? What is psychoheresy? Psychoheresy awareness, psycho awareness ministry in our 10th year is a non-profit religious corporation for the purpose of informing and educating Christians about psychoheresy. Psychoheresy is the integration of secular psychological counseling theories and therapies with the Bible. Psychoheresy is also the intrusion of such theories into the preaching and practice of Christianity especially when they contradict or compromise biblical Christianity in terms of the nature of man, how he is to live, and how he changes. So how do we approach the issues? The primary purpose of informing Christians about psychoheresy is to encourage them to find Jesus Christ and the Word of God sufficient for matters of life and conduct and to encourage believers to use the Bible to understand humanity, how they are to live and how they are to confront problems of living. Careful distinctions are made to delineate the area of concern. What constitutes psychoheresy in contrast to what might be benign investigation of behavior. So what do we do? We produce a free bi-monthly newsletter. We examine psychological research. They actually do more reading every year. It's stunning the amount of reading that they have to do. They have to read all the literature. They have to read all of the periodicals. They have to really read all of the journals. They have to stay up to date with the latest of the science, or the quote-unquote science, of behavioral psychology. We provide information concerning the above-stated topics through books, position papers, warning packages, speaking, media, and correspondence. The position papers are written by various people with the same qualifications listed for the newsletter articles. And finally, we provide resources such as tapes, books, and other reading materials for identifying, discerning, and confronting psychoheresy and for encouraging one another in the faith. Faith in Christ as our all-sufficient Lord and Savior. All right, so we've got newsletter, you've got books, you've got position papers. You want to know what they think about certain things? There they are. A contrite heart is better than, a, than an esteemed self. How Self-Esteem Ideology Contradicts Reason and the Bible by Bruce Davidson. Uh, celebrate Recovery, A Way Which Seemeth Right. Are you familiar with Celebrate Recovery? It's like a Christian version of AA. There's an article here by T.A. McMahon that uh, discusses that. Um, a response to the Christian Research Institute's evaluation of theophostic prayer ministry. Very critical evaluation of that. Confronting the BCF self-confrontation manual. Now, there's a lot of positive things you can say about this manual. This manual does not deny that we're sinners. 
This manual makes very clear that the heart is deceitful above all else and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It, it has some very admirable things to say, but then it also goes into these other problem areas. And so this confronting the BCF self-confrontation manual. Very well done. A church's unholy union with the four temperaments. Uh, an article about Lawrence Crabb. An article about Robert Hicks. An article about uh, Jay Grimstead. Different things there. Those are their position papers. They're not shy about what they hold to and why they hold to it. And they name names and they step on toes. But if uh, in their conviction it is what it is, then uh, then it is what it is. All right. So psychoheresy-aware.org. That's the first website you want to go to. When I create the page for this uh, class, I'll have the links on there so that you'll be able to just immediately click there and go through. The other one is the Brian Call. The Brian Call.org. The Brian Call.org. Dave Hunt and T.A. McMahon. And uh, you can just search Bob Gann and you get 50 articles. You can search Psycho Heresy. You can even just come down here and click on Topics, Psychology in the Church, right there. They also write about cults. They also write about Mormonism. They also write, I mean, they got tons of topics. But one of their main themes is psychology in the church. And there's a whole, there's a whole product line. Now, I warn you, though, they sell all their stuff. It's not going to come cheap. Um, you're going to, if you want a lot of their DVD packages and things like that, uh, then you'll be making contributions to their ministries. But I have never been disappointed by anything I've read by Dave Hunt or T.A. McMahon related to psychology. You want something to watch during the week? Are you a YouTuber? Go to YouTube, youtube.com, type in Bob Gann, B-O-B-G-A-N. Bob Gann, and, uh, or even Martin Bob Gann might be better. There's a Raymond Bob Gann, and I don't think I want to follow that link. Martin Bob Gann. And the very top one you're going to come to is going to be called Psychology in the Church, and it's from the Berean Call. It's from Dave Hunt and T.A. McMahon, and there's a series of six videos. They're 10 minutes long each. It's a total of a one-hour program, and that would be very valuable. Just watch that hour program. Watch all six parts. And I think you're going to have an eagerness to download this material, to read this book, to start praying over what um, our responsibility is in ministering to one another. If you've got a brother that's discouraged, do you want him to go the Freudian method and do the psychoheresy uh, therapy routine? Or are you the one that's designed and gifted and equipped? And even if you're not, you can be in prayer as the pastor or a deacon or, a, or somebody, an older brother with wisdom, an older sister with wisdom comes alongside. So I'll put the links to those six parts on the page as well. That'll help to help you to find those YouTube videos. But like I say, it's top of the list if you search YouTube for Martin Bobgan, Psychology in the Church, Part 106. Do you just watch it? Work your way through all six of them. It'll take you an hour. And uh, it'll be the fastest hour you've ever gone through because it just it, it grabs you right in. And there'll be, art, there'll be interviews with Dave Hunt, interviews with Martin and Deidre, interviews with some other folks that write about this kind of stuff. And so I encourage that greatly. I mentioned uh, Jay Adams. One of the first books I ever read on this when I was a young pastor figuring, well, how can I fix people? <laughs> I can't. But how can I counsel? How can I encourage them? And Jay Adams has a couple of books. A Theology of Christian Counseling. And that's interviewed a lot of folks. After uh, Glenn Carnegie you know, recommends this, uh, Jim Myers recommends this, a lot of doctrinal guys think that this has really helped them over the years. And I've gleaned some good things out of this book. But I've also had my eyes open to some of the snares that I think, hmm, we've missed the boat regarding this. Theology of Christian Counseling. The other one that he wrote is called Competent to Counsel. And uh, I don't want to do a price compare. I just want to bring it up. Competent to Counsel. This one meant more to me than the other one because this one really encouraged me that, hey, I'm a pastor teacher by gift. I've got all the tools I need. I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got my gift in this. I've got the equipping. God the Father has suited me. I am competent to counsel. I can shepherd. I can shepherd. 
And people ask, do you do counseling? I say, oh, I don't counsel. I shepherd. And I've, I've said that for years, and I've said that because of this text. But lately I've started to realize that even this approach has issues. And if I can glean the best out of Jay Adams and the best out of Martin and Deidre Bobgan, and ultimately if I can just walk based on my convictions of the Scriptures, then we will have a fruitful ministry whereby um, a man of wisdom can encourage a struggling brother or sister. And that's what it's all about. You don't need months and months and months of talking about it. You don't need years and years and years of talking about it. Some people are in therapy for decades. Every day, every week, same day of the week, same time, same, uh, you know, talking about it. You don't need to talk about it. You need to find a scripture, addresses your issue, and deal with it. Obey. Repent. Forsake what needs to be forsaked. Embrace the Lord. Don't need months and months. You just need a wise brother, a wise sister who loves you enough to say, stop it. Right? Like that uh, Bob Newhart video. Stop it. It's hilarious. Have you seen that? The Bob Newhart video, stop it. You need to see it. I'll put that on YouTube. I'll put that on the page as well. Anyway, so I have them on my library still. If you, uh, some of you were in the, the mine the other night, it's up there on the shelf. Um, and I, I, I used to hold to it a whole lot more than I hold to it now. Now my thinking is much more lined up with Dave Hunt and uh, Martin Bobgan. Okay.